Big news, everyone. So apparently, over a month ago, there has been a revelation on Mike Hoga's new project. Why wasn't I informed of this? Fuck! Of course, it all turns out to be in German, which is why none of us have really heard about it. In fact, I, while just sort of uh, snooping around, I discovered that Mike Hoga had been much more active on the World of Players, or the World of Risen forums as of late, and uh, when I took a look into it, I discovered he, in fact, has a new... Uh, he, in fact, has done an interview, or at least has made comments, according to a Eurogamer article, which uh, I'm having a lot of trouble uh, reading due to Google Translate not really being the most um, effective form of uh, translation. So... Uh, what we do know is that the project that he is headlining is something that is currently codenamed Space Time, which apparently is going to be some form of sci-fi themed uh, role-playing game, although he was very hesitant to put a genre or label to his projects. And um, uh, what is most interesting to me is the fact that it is apparently um, the spearhead project of a new company that is being named Piranha Bytes Red. Now, from what I've read, that apparently has nothing to do with CD Project Red. In fact, it wasn't even supposed to have been inspired by it. It was just something they came up with and only realized the uh, unintentional reference later. You can believe that if you want. I don't really know what to think of it. But uh, it's interesting because this new company is... Uh, well, as I said, because of the translations... Uh, being less than reliable. It's hard to really know uh, what exactly is going to be. It's said He claims it is a fully separately operating company. It has um, no direct ties to uh, Piranha Bytes itself. And apparently they don't have a publisher for this project yet. And um, it's, it's uh, kind of weird to think about this, considering they're calling themselves Piranha Bytes Red but don't seem to have a direct relation to Piranha Bytes' main studio, although he does say that they are um, in contact with each other. They communicate with each other between the two companies, but uh, it doesn't seem that any real Piranha Bytes employees are working on this project. It's all um, a former... Uh, it seems to be mostly performed by former Piranha Bytes employees, now, what I wonder is because they're, uh, because they are, because they have the uh, ties at least in name, I'm wondering if perhaps they are both owned by a uh, sort of parent company or something, whatever you want to call it. And uh, here I'm going to talk about something that I'm not sure if a lot of people are fully aware of, which is that uh, Piranha Bytes is in fact apparently a. Um, uh, it's it's kind of it's really hard to figure out what exactly is uh, the case here. It seems that Piranha Bytes is really just the development um, the development wing of another company called Pluto Thirteen, and um, as far it, it's I, I don't even really know how to explain it. It's very confusing to me. Maybe someone can uh, clarify it a little bit, but it says that all but one of their employees is doing active development, and that all, um, it seems that all Piranha Bytes employees are actually uh, employees of Pluto 13 as well. And this came about as a result of uh, Piranha Bytes, the um, Piranha Bytes software the company being a subsidiary of another company called Fino Media, until that company went bankrupt due to uh, um, several... Uh, I guess uh, they went to trial for several reasons. And um, so basically that voided uh, Piranha Bytes' contract with them. They just kind of bailed out. And it sounds to me like they uh, developed the... They created the company, Pluto 13 as sort of the administration of Piranha Bytes as a studio. That's the only way I can think to explain it. It's very confusing to me, and I'm not entirely sure how it works. I don't really understand all this legal and bureaucratic jargon, so... Um, 
so what that leads me to wonder is, could it possibly be that um, Mike Hoga in this CD, uh, excuse me, this Piranha Bytes Red could actually also be a subsidiary or partly owned by Pluto 13? And um, I c- couldn't really find what I wanted to uh, confirm this, but I also thought that um, Piranha Bytes was considered to be a subsidiary of Cock Media, which is the uh, media company that also owns the Deep Silver label. So, because of that, I was wondering if that meant that Piranha Bytes is actually owned by Cock Media, or if just because of their contract with Deep Silver that they were considered a, um, they were considered a, a subsidiary, a subsidiary or something similar to that only for the duration of their contract and that they are now on their own while they seek out a new publisher. Again, I, like all the, um, all the bureaucracy behind that, I just don't really understand. There, there's a whole lot of, a uh, legal definition to this that just goes right over my head. So it's, um, not easy for me to really follow, but let's get into the bigger picture then. So this project, Space Time, it is going to be a sci-fi themed, um, first person, some sort of role playing type game. And, um, there's going to be a huge emphasis on the ship itself, which, uh, you don't tend to see in more mainstream, uh, sci-fi games where it's, um, uh, you know, the ship is more of a setting than an actual resource. And this makes me wonder, it makes me a little doubtful, because I'm worried that this game might come out during a highly competitive time, as we're seeing more games focusing on, um, focusing on the, uh, focusing on, like, space travel, the ship, um, like, you know, interstellar trade and all this kind of thing. The uh, first one that immediately comes to mind is Elite Dangerous, which has been doing, uh, which has been getting an exceptional amount of hype for uh, fans of that genre. So I'm worried that maybe just because this is going to be a much smaller title, it'll hit a niche for uh, people looking for a more casual entry into that that, uh, gameplay and genre, but... Uh, it does make me a little doubtful. It is something we don't see of too often, but um, I just I am hoping that uh, my doubts will uh, prove to be meaningless. Uh, there are no... Yeah, you do not level the characters as in conventional RPGs, but instead the um, upgrades are all done to your ship, so the ship is very important. They... Um, all navigation is done in first person, that includes the ship, but you are not restricted to the ship. There is a, supposedly about half the time will be spent in space traveling by ship, and the other half will be on foot or on some other form of transit on the uh, planetary level, on the ground level. Um, it's supposed to have free open gameplay, a very non-linear level design and uh, progression sort of thing. Uh, space combat will be directed from the captain's chair on the bridge, and of course in first person, or at least that's the implication. Um, and there will be out of ship combat that is, uh, again, from a first person shooter standpoint. But uh, the details of the combat itself, what kind of weapons will be involved, what kind of uh, you know combat system would come into play, we just don't really know. Um, levels can be small, such as a crashed ship, or large, such as an impact crater valley. And, um, so, it does seem to be level-based. The, um, what I get from this is that the ship combat itself, or that the, uh, that the interstellar travel itself might be wide open. You can travel in any direction you want and just keep heading until you find something. But when you actually get to the um, ground level, the planetary surface, it seems like it might be a little bit more like Mass Effect, where instead of just landing where you want to and going everywhere, it instead uh, opens up these uh, smaller levels that uh, you have that you can explore, but you can't really go outside of necessarily. There will be alien civilizations, both um, both existing and extinct. And uh, part of the part of the gameplay will involve searching these um, 
searching these ancient alien civilizations for new um, tech and science. Communication with these alien, with the living alien communities might be possible, but might be very difficult. There won't be any kind of magic abilities. It will all be straight up sci-fi, so no, no Jedi mind tricks or um, uh, biotics as uh, Mass Effect has. It says little to no generated content. Now that sounds to me like it might actually end up being a roguelike or a roguelite or whatever you want to call it. So everything is generated as soon as you hit new game, which will it'll be interesting. It will certainly appeal to some people, but that's not exactly my favorite format. The graphic style is apparently going to be much more dirty and gritty rather than, you know, shiny and polished. The world map is the Milky Way galaxy with relevant planets. So, uh, it, it sounds to me like Earth might be a destination. And, um, it'll be, pre it seems to be pretty well spread out, but it's not going to be multiple systems or galaxies as we see in games like Mass Effect, for example. Um, the current status is a prototype being developed on the Unreal 4 engine, which uh, he hopes to use for the game itself. And this is good news for all of us Piranobytes fans who are used to Piranobytes developing on their own custom in-house engines, which have almost never worked out to uh, any impressive technical standards. Um, crowdfunding does not seem to be a... Um, they're not considering it as an option. They're, in fact, looking for a publisher contract, which unfortunately means that if no publisher is found, this project may be canceled. And apparently the story is supposed to be about the first human-developed ship capable of faster-than-light travel. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Event Horizon the game has been confirmed. <laughs> not really, but it would be awesome. Um, anyway, that's there's not really much more to see about it, or at least nothing that's been translated as of yet. I've requested people on World of Risen to translate a little bit more, which um, Eddie Vedder and Fubar, good friends of mine, have uh, done pretty well so far, and certainly I would not have been able to create this video without them, so I do once again recommend that you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, especially the German-speaking ones, um, hop around the World of Risen uh, forums, the World of Players, and uh, find Try and find more out about it for your own uh, for your own curiosity and enjoyment, but also to uh, help me understand it a little bit better. And I would really appreciate it. I hope to find more in the in the near future, but I don't expect we'll really find any. We'll really hear anything more before the end of the year. I will have the uh, German thread on the um, on the uh, on the uh, on the uh, on the uh, on the. Uh, the German thread on the subject in the World of Risen forums, as well as the English thread, which is, uh, as I said, woefully sparse so far. And I will also link the Eurogamer article for those of you who um, are confident in your ability to translate it. I would very much like to find out a little bit more, and any of you who can help me in that regard, I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, I totally forgot to mention some very critical points, which involves the uh, people who are actually working on this project. Of course, we know about Mike Hoga, but it turns out that actually some current employees of Pranobites are also working on this as well, such as Sasha Hendricks and Mike Ruv. And um, uh, Mike Hoga says he's been in touch with Kai Rosencrantz. What he's going to be involved in, we don't really know. Could be just the uh, audio engineering, or it could in fact be the soundtrack. And uh, Karsten Edenfeld. Karsten Edenfeld, he was a programmer um, for Gothic through Gothic 3. And uh, another name was dropped. I cannot, cannot hope to pronounce this. Jan Kernt. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's see if... Uh, I have no idea. Um... But this fellow, of course, is apparently the former concept artist for Risen 2, at least, and has been providing the project with some artwork. And um, it, it, he's, Mike Hoga has said that they might consider using Kickstarter to fund the prototype itself, but not the full project, and that um, their finances come from their own resources and apparently some government money as well from the state of North Rhine-Westphalia, however you pronounce that. 
So it sounds to me like this prototype itself is uh, what they are intending to um, showcase their um, ideas and to use as a... Uh, I don't know what the word for it is, but uh, they're basically using it to try and encourage a uh, publishing contract or other form of investment to uh, help the project be uh, completed. Ladies and gentlemen, until we find out more, I will see you later. <laughs>